Welcome. Welcome back. Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your mm. boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 3, Episode 15, Wrecking Ball Wanda. Let's go ahead and get into this ghetto, disrespect fur. If y'all don't get episode. y'all art and grandma out the street arguing you know. Arguing over these kids, right? I said if the AARP gang don't sit down somewhere. I told him that. I said, man, I said, if my mom and your mama was arguing about (laughs) us in public, I'd be so goddamn embarrassed, man. I'd be so embarrassed. The kids were embarrassed. (laughs) This was the first time that I've seen an argument that Mel did not participate in. Yeah. Because she was embarrassed. (laughs) And she should have been. (laughs) Oh, my God. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we first start off where we have Maurice and Kimmy, right? They pull up to this lot of land and whatnot. And I'm thinking they're at Scott Manor. Like, they're picking out their perfect place for their home or whatever. And Kimmy was like, wait a minute. This this, 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 this don't feel right in my spirit. Well, come to find out, this is a Scott Manor. That's, that's what I said. But we're on another plot of land that Maurice had found. And she's thinking, okay, well, maybe we're going to build out here instead of Scott Manor. And no, 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 it ain't none of that either. Yeah, he trying to flip. He trying to flip, make a little bit more change, man. So Kimmy said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, come again. So what you pretty much did was you went out, found a project, hired everybody for the project. It's the equivalent of, you know, got pregnant, you've been baking for nine months, you know, pushed the baby out, and now... Take care of it. Or it's equivalent of either at your church or whatever organization you're part of. Church was all up. them people come up with all these great ideas, but the faithful few is the ones that got to execute it. That's what Kimmy was like. You got all this right idea, but I'm going to have to be the one to execute it because a, a case is going to come up. And you're going to be too <laughs> And you're going to say that's going to be too important because that's what mm-hmm. makes the money. And you go ahead and have me out here holding the bag. Come I'm on. I'm not going to do it. Come on, Maurice, man. She said, matter of fact, we already don't been down this route. Let's talk about Monster now. <laughs> you said that you would be the person that's do- that's doing all activities to and from. He said, you know what? I am, but about that. Yeah. You think you can pick him up? up? Yeah, you can pick him up. Pick him up and then did. Yeah, but we, we, I, we, we laughing and playing about Maurice. But, I, man, kudos, man, to you for trying to get some help with this man because mm. we can we can sit back and we can judge and say what y'all should and shouldn't be doing but we don't understand what we need to do until you ain't in the middle of it until you in them shoes for real so kudos man for i know you get ready to get to it with dr francis but oh yeah kudos man for bringing in dr francis to help y'all out man yeah but <clears throat> shout out to maurice maurice was looking at our um review from a couple of weeks ago and he slid in the dms because we had a question about credit and how does it work when you file bankruptcy? Yeah, you know? yeah. So he slid in the DMs. He was like, I got y'all, fam. This is what happens. Blah, 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 blah. He didn't have... I said, that's why that's I what like you. Oh, yeah. And by the way, bro, both of our credit scope is above 750. Yes. Hey. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so they said we're going to talk about this, this meeting with Dr. Francis, right? So y'all know that the guys all got together and pretty much... Except for... We all knew that Marcel probably won't wasn't yeah, going to come. Gonna come. <laughs> and we kind of had an idea that Martel wasn't going to come either. But he was there. Yeah, he he was up. there. So what had happened was they ended up talking to Dr. Francis and whatnot. And he got right into it. Like, Maurice was like, you know, I've never thought of myself as being depressed. But Al, as Marcel was talking about the things that's plaguing him, I'm like, well, maybe I need to get a checkup to make sure that I'm not right there because right. I feel everything that he's been feeling. Right. And if he says it's depression, then maybe <laughs> yeah, that's what uh-huh. I, like I told you, like my family, maybe I got it too. too yep. <laughs> so Dr. Francis says, so you are basing whether or not you have depression based off of what, what somebody What Marceau else? said? It, pretty much he but was But he like, throws some shade though. He was like, you, you <laughs> listening to Marceau? <laughs> and diagnosing yourself out there. Yeah. Like, Nah, don't diagnose yourself yeah. off of his bullshit, <laughs> but let me diagnose you. So we pretty much got right down to the nitty gritty. And Maurice was saying pretty much, you know, a high achievers, highly stressed. He never takes time off to do anything, no not vacation. even vacation. I said, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I Are you doing vacations, bro? But they hadn't been on the honeymoon either, so yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Maurice and Kimmy, 
Y'all can vacation with us anytime. If y'all been on yeah, our yeah. Life With Us TV channel, oh yeah, we man, we gets it in on vacation. Yes, sir. Look, but pick a place that's in our tax bracket. Now we in different tax brackets, <laughs> you know. Or give us some time to make payments <laughs> on. <it. laughs> but it's, we gonna have a good guy doing time there. Hey, yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Francis pretty much was like, once he realized what he was dealing with, he said, pretty much, you're dealing with two wives here. Yeah, that was that. Wow. He was like, you have your goal in mind. Mm -hmm. You have this 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 benchmark that you're trying to reach, but you're making the other love of your life compete with this idea of where you're trying to go. Yeah. And he was like, it's not fair. And he <clears> said, <throat> eventually, one of them gonna stop fighting. So he was like, pretty much, you need to you need to create balance, and you need to find it now. Yeah. Maurice got it. That's yeah. what I love. He said, yeah, he's like the light bulb. Like that is so much gonna change my life. And I like when he was on um, when he talked about uh, God doing it. It's, it slipped my mind. Uh, oh, when he was telling both Mar uh, Maurice and uh, Martel that pretty much both of y'all are paying the price right now for success. But I I do like that he mm -hmm. didn't tell them that they were depressed. He but didn't. but you were dealing with the basically. What it takes to be successful, and you have to decide what you want. Mama, I was talking about that a few episodes back. Is yeah. like we look out and we see people like them with success, and we feel like that's what we want. But can you but handle that? that? But can you handle that? Yeah. yeah, that's what that's the cost to have what yeah. they have. Yeah, and I'm and I think about that all the time too for myself because I'm very much built like a Maurice. When I mm -hmm. put my hand to something, yeah. I am doing it. And I yeah. am doing it with everything that I have. There's no there's team, no sleep. Right. There's like if you there's gotta, something gotta go after it. If there's something mm -hmm. to be found, if there's a jewel in there, right. I am going to be that person to find it. Mm -hmm. So I get it. Like when you're a high achiever and I ain't even mm -hmm. on that level. Right. I can't even imagine. Cause the stress I put on myself. But Dr. Francis said the key thing, you gotta ask yourself. Is it worth it? Crazy. Yeah. Is it worth it? But then, <laughs> we had that good session, y'all. And it reminds me so much of when you're dealing with somebody, when you're telling them about everything that they've done wrong and how they need to correct some things. And they are hearing what you're saying and applying it, it to, to somebody, somebody else. else. Yep. <laughs> so we have Martel in the confessional. See, see, see. <laughs> you know, you know, when you know when he says something about that, and you know how um uh, how uh, <laughs> he stops that. <laughs> How, how you know, when you, you're making these sacrifices at the price of other people. And, you know, when I think about when me and Mel, we were together. And, you know, how she just started taking on more things. And yeah. doing more things. Taking on all these projects. And, uh, she, you know, making my, making the kids secondary, you know. You know, I get it. You know, Mel, Mel, Mel definitely did that. If that ain't narcissistic, I don't know what he is, man. What? But we all, we all have been guilty of that, though. When somebody else is giving us good advice... We thinking of other people who should be right here at this moment <laughs> getting that advice. And I'm like, if they were supposed to be there, they would have been there. It was for you. It was ghetto yeah, for you. It was, <laughs> it was ghetto. That's why she wasn't there. The session was ghetto and disrespect first. But I ain't gonna lie, I, I've done that at church. <laughs> the pastor's preaching a good message. Oh, and he starts talking about something, you be like, yeah, they That's they my talking wife. About, yeah, he talking about brother so and so over there. Uh huh. Preach, Pastor. Preach. <laughs> oh, it's the worst when you think it applies to your husband or wife. Oh yeah. Oh, and y'all yeah. just got into it about something yeah. like you better preach it. <laughs> yep. Say like, God ain't never talking to you. Always talking to somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so Martel goes over to his mama's house. Marley, listen. The conversation came up with Martel, and you know he was like, you know, when I was in Vegas and whatnot, <laughs> my soul go. brought it up, and he said, you know, that he was. He thought he was dealing with a little bit of depression and stuff. And, you know, I thought about whether or not I was depressed. And I don't think I'm depressed. I just been through a whole lot. <laughs> and she said, baby, you don't been through a whole lot. Like, you've been through a lot. And she said, baby, and you don't need no therapy. And you don't need, you need no, <laughs> we our own therapist. I said, don't you don't be you, giving don't that do bad that. advice. Don't you say that booze kit, man. That's, what That's our problem now. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. <clears throat> and she was like, but you just work so hard and you do so much. And back in the days when them kids was little and she she just had you, you out there doing, doing working, so much. working, working. I was working. so mad. She said, she going to kill my boy. She go, what? 
So we turn it on mail now, my Molly. But that's what we do. And she said, I, I would get so mad. And said, she just going to kill my boy. You know, and well, I mean, so what? You know, you don't did a lot. You don't, you, you're a good person. <laughs> so what? You got the girl pregnant. I ain't happy about it either. I said, Ooh, what? <laughs> they didn't exactly come out like that, but y'all watch. Uh, yeah. So like, pretty much it came out like that. Pretty no. much. That's how I did it. <laughs> and she's sitting back there like, mm -hmm, this my time. Everything that she don't did. And I ain't like when y'all was married, y'all divorced now. And I get to say it little by little. I, that's why I say it is never a good thing when parents interject themselves into their kids' relationships. That's it. It never works. Nope. It never works because it's always a bias. Oh, yeah, yeah. Always a oh, bias. Yeah. Always. So then she was like, yeah, you know, the kids, Tank was over here. And he was talking <laughs> about, I said, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> He was talking about this song that, you know, and he was trying to understand what was going on. And she said, oh, yeah, this is about your, this about this about your, your daddy. daddy. Your mama singing about your daddy, baby. My dad said, but mama. Why, why, why would you do you, that? Why, why, would you, why would you tell her? She was like, I could sing any goddamn thing I want. <laughs> I said, no, but Marlene. Uh-uh. It's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> For once, Mar Martel had to check somebody about being wrong about saying something. She was like, but it's true. You should be checking your ex-wife about I that. Did. Which Not is, me. Which is true. <laughs> but, buddy, you ain't had to, you tell, had the to tell the You had to tell the boy what the song was about. So she confirmed it to the, to the baby. So now these kids really know that it's about their, their daddy, which they knew. Yeah. So he told his mom about the destiny run and whatnot, and she <sighs> said, "You know what? That may be something I'd be interested in sliding on through too. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we are. So what else? Um, blah blah blah. blah. We talked about the cancer session. We ain't gonna talk about that no more. Yeah. But uh, uh, so let's get to the destiny race. Destiny race. This I, is where the I love that concept, by the way. I do too. That is that is very motivational. That, yeah, racing towards your goals to and your goals, dreams. Yeah. Because unfortunately, we are in a society now, a lot of us don't set goals. We just fly by the seat of our pants. We have an idea of what we want to do, but we'll never sit down to put pen to paper to make it happen. And what's the saying? If yeah. you don't plan to win, you plan to fail? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something so, like that. Yeah. It's not like your grandma now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My grandma never finishes a sentence. Never sentence. She's nope. like, Lynette, come over here now. I, mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you go up there and pick me up <laughs> something? Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> but we know what the heck she's yeah, talking about. Yeah, we know exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> All right, Grandma, I got it. <clears throat> so, um, they're the Destiny Race and whatnot. Mel and Tiffany, <laughs> they showed up at the finish line first because they cheated. But then, Not a drop of sweat on Not a drop. But we're not even going to talk about nah, the race. We're going to talk about the disrespect for stuff that was the going dis on. Disrespect for it? <laughs> so, after the race, right? Tiffany has a moment, because everybody's kind of, you know, just huddled around talking, trying to catch their breath and whatnot. I said, I said, where the hot dogs at? Like, where the gay trade? <laughs> Shout out to Gloria. We yeah. had this lady at our church that she didn't say Gatorade. She said gay, gay trade. trade. Yep. <laughs> Pick up some of that gay trade. <laughs> so, um, sitting around and Tiffany was like, you know what? While we have everybody together, I would like to thank everybody for coming out to the anniversary celebration of ours. But I wanna, I really wanna say this. Like, why is it that every time we get together, there's an argument? And I'm like, you say you, 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 you the one to start that booze, kid. I'm tired of you. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? So then Destiny goes into this tangent about because Martel is passive Absolutely. aggressive, which he is, but this last thing was not on Martel. I don't hear nobody say that was not on Martel. Melody poked a bear on that one, and Martel Martel did. <laughs> so Destiny is like trying to tell Martel about himself. He's actually kind of like eating it up. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, I am passive aggressive, <laughs> but she got a she got a she got smart mouth. Let's let's go ahead and keep it a buck. And she's talking to him, kind of in a friendly like banter, but at the same time. In front of a whole lot of people, it kind of felt like you challenging me, me or yeah. you being disrespectful. Yeah. So Martel was like, uh-uh-uh, no. And she was like, uh-uh-uh, no. Martel, Martel. So then 
Mama Marlene was like, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. What you're not going to do is talk all crazy to my boy. You ain't never. I'm sick, <laughs> sick of y'all ganging up on him. <laughs> y'all ain't no hope. That ain't your ex-husband. And you don't need to take up for her every time there's an argument, Destiny. I've been known you. I've been known you for a long time. But what you're not going to do is be over here talking smack to my boy. No, nah, not while I'm here, not on my watch. I said, Mama Marlene said, I'm getting my airtime uh -huh, in yep, this yep. season. You hear what I said? She said, I'm going to give y'all something to talk about in the blogs this week. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I seen what that little check did for them little seeds I did uh -huh. last season. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm giving it to you. Now I'm going to get them Wanda checks. Say, uh-huh. I'm going to make the ratings on this show high this week. <laughs> I said, Lord have mercy. So they kind of <laughs> so they kind of just was just going back and forth with it and whatnot. And um, somebody was saying something about, you know, this all happened at their anniversary. Mama Marlene said, and happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> Lord, if she didn't make me. Man, they fell out, boy. <laughs> she's like, uh-uh, we're not doing this. We're not. Ain't nobody challenging, though. No. And she said, on that note, I don't head and I don't seem to enough. I got to go to work. <laughs> I'm going to go on over here and see Vans. And we go hug it out. And I'm about to leave. And that's exactly what happened. She went over there in her van. I love that they are still cool. Like, they yeah. are still cordial. Van said, you know, you need to call me because you know we take these kids out together. We uh -huh. need some help. So she was like, yep, we definitely going to be on that. And then here comes Wanda. Hey, y'all. Wrecking ball Wanda. She coming up, hey, y'all, what y'all talking about? They was like, oh, we over here talking about these kids and all this. She said, well, yeah, we got a lot of them going on <laughs> around here. I said, y'all do. All of y'all really do have a whole lot of kids amongst all of y'all together. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they That's do. a lot of dead going grand Yeah, kids. yeah. So Mama Marlene was like, you know what? I got to go to work. I'll leave y'all to each other. Let's go. Let's get it on. <laughs> this is where it just took a yeah, really went, bad turn. Went left turn quick. No, before Marlene left, this <clears throat> is what happened. Wanda was like, you know I was over there talking to Mel and Martell about getting back together. Yeah. They, they, was was like, like, they was like, oh, hell no. That ain't never going. We ain't talking about that. No, no, no. So Van said you would be the one to talk. Ain't nobody gonna take no advice from you. You the same girl that was the person that was on social media telling girls to get with married men to get whatever they need to get out of them. Or they so, should be treated the same as, be, as, as the wife. wife. Like what? So she was like, how in the world you think Mel gonna listen to, to you, anything yep. that you got to say? Exactly. <laughs> and she was like, what you trying to make? What you talking about? She said, you yeah, you out here sleeping with married men too. She was like, I ain't got time for this ghetto mess. Ghetto. Ghetto, I know who's ghetto when I see Wanda look great in her confessional. Yeah, she did. She looked real good. She's yeah. a pretty woman. Anyway. That's the best I've seen her look yet. Yeah, but she could have saved the context, but everything she was, they did that. Because she's pretty anyway. But she on that top of some ghetto. Oh, I can show you yeah. ghetto. I can put my hands yeah, on you. I can cuss your ass. Yeah. I can do this. I snatch my earrings off and throw them on the ground. Put I'm my shoes off. Snatch his wig off. That's ghetto. That's, no, no. Ghetto. That's ghetto. <laughs> I said, what the hell? Lord have mercy. So Ben was like, I ain't never much ever slept with no married man. Don't even try to put that on me. So here come the, the, the daughters. They come over because now they trying to figure out what is going on. So they over there talking about this and they over there talking about that. So Tisha comes over and I said, Tisha, this is not your fight. And this is not a time to interject what had happened on social media. This is a time just to let it, let the fumes go out. Let it simmer down. Let it let burn it out. <laughs> so then Tisha was like, but Van, you, you a cyber, cyber bully, bully in my mom. Uh -huh. Like you a cyber bully in my mom. And she went to do like this. But Van, Van don't touch me. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't you ever put your hands on me. Don't you ever put your hands on me. I was like, Van, you do it too much. Yep. But <laughs> don't touch me. She shouldn't put her hands on me. Don't put your hands on Lord me. Lord have mercy. And I was like, you knew that girl won't mean to you no harm. She just kind of was like, man, don't touch me. <laughs> don't ever put your hands on me. Mm -mm. I was like, Lord have mercy. So then the <sighs> conversation finally came down a little bit. Wanda come up again uh -huh. with disrespect for stuff. A <laughs> different So... Eventually, Tisha had to take Wanda off to the side. And Wanda was like, I want to put my hands on her. I want to put my hands Damn. on her. I want to reach out and touch somebody. <laughs> and she said, Mama, 
We, you too old to be out here acting like that. You in your fifties acting like this? Man. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, uh-uh, I don't you care know, at you all. You know how eyes is. <laughs> just because we. Just because. <laughs> Hey, I love I love a good person that can chew their words up, man. Cause I, I do it. I, I, especially me. <laughs> especially y'all that know that over on our Life with Us TV channel, y'all know I chew words right on up. I don't say I have stuff right. I said, oh my god. <laughs> so then Tisha tells um, Wanda, it's like you gotta stop. And I even talked to Kimmy, and you told me that Kimmy got real nasty. And yeah. all this and hollering at you. She said that oh, she wasn't still even stand, true. She still standing on that. She was like, she was real disrespectful Respect to me. <laughs> to me. And I put my hands on her too. <laughs> so Tisha and her uh, girl confessional was like, you know what? I don't came to a fork in the road. And I realized that me and my mama just handle things differently. I don't need her to fight my battles. We just can't invite her to no more events. To no more events. Because I For a long time. Let's see. That. Make that happen. Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like Dre said, don't bring her around here for a long time. You know why? Because Wanda's going to set it on every time. Every time. Maso said, you flew in here just to start some shit, didn't you? Yup. <laughs> she did. Yep. And that was pretty much it. The AARP gang was, was on, on it. it this yeah, week. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mama Marlene. <laughs> Mama Marlene, I ain't never all. seen her act like that. I told you she had that Whitney Houston vibe going. But, on, like, but, but you know, but you know, she felt like she felt like she was waiting. She was waiting on Miss Wanda to come and step and say something. She been waiting. She... <laughs> the kids were on their best behavior this episode. The only, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bartell. That's all I got to say. Because <laughs> this would have been a perfect episode for him to really, like, go off. Because he was cornered this week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just him and his mama. And she came through there like, mm-mm, stand back. I got this baby. Well, he said if it had been for his mama, he would have had to raise his voice at, uh, at, uh, Destiny. Destiny. Yeah. Destiny was out of pocket, in my opinion. Like, she was, she was right. But, but wrong it was time, wrong, wrong time. <laughs> but they like that on this show. It's like, they wait, you had a power, you wait till you had a... Powerful event or a nice event to bring up bullshit. Hmm. Let's just but it's a show. Mel and Martell. It's a show. It's for yeah. It's yeah. a show. That's yeah. how they do it, man. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla! Holla. Boom.